I'm nice time to talk, uh, have, a, have a talk about horses, about stallions. I had a question of somebody and I'm always a little bit pleased uh, when somebody asks me a question then I'm honored and then I think by myself, wow, this person really wants some information. So I'm going to do my best to answer it. Well, the question was, listen, hello, I am a very experienced rider and I have always ridden stallions. Well, that wakes, uh, wakes my interest, of course. I mean, I'm also dealing with stallions. But six weeks ago, we had a stallion and he was mounting me and he attacked me. That means he didn't attack me, but he was sexual interested in me. Oh dear. So I broke a few ribs and I broke my arm. But now I'm recovering and I want to go back to the horses. And... I noticed that he still responds a little bit strange. She noticed that he still responds a little bit strange. And I'm wondering what the hell is going on there. Um, since I want to ride him, I would like to have some advice in what I can do about it. Well, this is a short <laughs> part of, of, of a question I got and I'm... When I read it again and again, and, and then I think by myself, what is happening here? If a horse, a stallion, mounts a person, then there can be three reasons. It can be a filly that was raised with a bottle. Many times these fillies who are raised with a bottle don't learn normal distance. They learn uh, that the human being is their mother and the human being will love it. Oh, I'm their mother. I'm so honored. I'm mama, mama, mama. Okay, let's go to, to science. Perhaps people know Konrad Lorenz. He did the imprinting thing with the geese. In the meanwhile, we are looking at uh, Rociero, who is enjoying this April uh, sun. Anyway, Konrad Lorenz with the geese, the imprinting uh, stuff. That's how people uh, got this imprinting stuff of fillies. To me it's abuse, but that's another story. What happened? He had a breeding machine, so he had some eggs of geese. And he bred, uh, the machine bred the, the eggs. And all of a sudden there was a day that the eggs came out. And he was very happy about that. And then he noticed that since he, the geese, uh, the small baby geese, saw him uh, as for the first time, they followed him. They followed him wherever he go, wherever he went. They followed him, they walked behind him. Well, that's cute and that's sweet, you might think. Yeah, sure. And they were feeding him and people took pictures. I don't know exactly the year it was, but they, they already had pictures, possibility of pictures, and people loved it. Oh, how cute, how sweet. And there was this big man following, being followed by, by seven or eight uh, geese, small baby geese. And yes, they went everywhere. Since this movie, uh, never mind. And so he, he fed them and they were happy and the people were very, very enthusiastic. And it sounds perfect. Okay, so if you want an animal to follow you, you have to be the first one to be there. Well, that's what many people take very serious. Huh? They go to the filly, the mare gives birth to a filly, they, they clean the filly, the mare doesn't have to do anything. They say to the mare, you can rest now. But people forget that this moment of imprinting is the most important uh, ritual for the mare and the filly. First of all, the filly gets used to, to the mare. The mare knows what to do and she get, gets the smell and so does the filly. So its first contact is very important for the, for the mare and the baby. Why? Because it's a first relationship. And since horses are very into relationships, it's very important to have a good imprinting, a good uh, relationship. Philly has one mother, and that's mother horse, not the human being. But back to Conrad Lawrence, what happened? These geese became more mature, and then they got into their adolescence. Yeah, they, they, they started to make hormones, and the males made testosterone, and testosterone is for mating, and blah, 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 blah. So when they grew up, what happened? They noticed that these geese were approaching him and his wife, I think there were two people, his wife also was part of it, they approached this, these people and they were making funny movements. And then they discovered 
what it was. There was some, some stuff on their uh, clothing, and this sounds very dirty. And it is, I think it is, because it's very disturbed behavior. They discovered that the, the stuff on the clothing of the people was sperm. So he noticed, he discovered that these animals wanted to mount him, wanted to have sex with him. Well, I don't have to explain to you that if a horse wants to have sex with a human being, what can happen? The end of this male, of this, this person was, how am I going to ride him? Because I want to ride him. Well, my advice is very easy and very simple. Get him castrated or bring him to somebody who's experienced with stallions. This person is not capable of riding him because this horse probably had his wrong imprinting and mixes up people with mares. Do horses know if you're male or female? Yes. In animal nature, in animal world, the knowing of one is male or female is very important and they will definitely respond on it. So I compare this with the wrong imprinting and I also compare it with probably a wrong behavior of the woman who is not aware that she is fancying the horse. When you are fancying a horse, a stallion, a male animal of 500 kilos, you will have a very, very big risk. Anyway, so all I want to say, don't mess with a horse, don't mess with a full stallion, be very careful always. It might be a wrong imprinting, but it might also be the people who want to hug and, and see these animals as hugging bears, as cute, fluffy animals. Well, they are not. They can hurt us very bad. And please help them to have a good life with us.